do for you? Uh, you Mr. Cartwright? That's right. Well, my name's Harry Starr. Do you mind if I have some of that water? Oh, help yourself. Thank you. What happened to your horse? I had to sell him for his feed bill. And mine. Mr. Cartwright, I'm looking for a job. I sure hope you have work for me. Well, Mr. Starr, I think you're in luck. We're looking for some extra hands for Roundup, so uh, we want you to take your gear, put it in the bunkhouse, we can start you out in the morning. I thank you, sir. You know, this is a handsome Palomino you have here. Oh, you know the breed? Oh, yes. I worked one up in Oregon. Oh. Well, maybe someday I'll let you, I'll let you work this one. When? <laughs> well, you can start by putting him up in the barn. <laughs> That'll be a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, Pa. Well, how's things at the roundup? Oh, just great, Paul. Adam says he ain't never seen so many little twin calves, all fat and sassy. Oh, yeah? Hey, who's that? My new stat, eh? No, no, the fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, a new hand I just took on. Oh, good, we need some. Yeah, well, like the five new men in there. I've had them working on a new remoter. They should be ready to join Adam in the morning. I hope you get the idea, Engine. If you don't, Lee Burton will be glad to give you a few more lessons. I'm not going to fight you, mister. Maybe I'll let you decide that, and maybe I won't. It's decided. Now, both of you, listen. This goes for the rest of you and you men, too. This is a working ranch. We don't have any time for gentlemanly sports. It's get along or get out. There's just one more rule. Anything you break, you fix. Now, both of you shake hands. I don't shake hands with no Indian. I draw my pay first. All right, Burton. You've been here two days. Your daughter's got to about cover that. Go to the barn and get some tools and fix that rail. Take your time. We're going to be a while. Why don't I go down to the blacksmith with you and I can help you unload this stuff? Don't worry. Come on, we can manage. We'll be back to get you in a minute. All right. Take your time. Get up. Get up.
whiskey. Don't you know better to serve Indians in here? I didn't know he was Injun. Well, that's what he is. And you know, Injuns and fire water don't mix. Will you look at the boots this guy's got on? Brand new and shiny. None of us here got new boots. Not even halfway new. Most of us could probably stand on a five cent piece and tell whether it was heads or tails. Speak for yourself, stranger. I haven't seen a five cent piece in so long. Didn't know which was head or tails. That's cause engines and breeds took all the jobs. Like this one here came along and got me fired from a good job. Now, who ever heard of an engine wearing a white man's boots anyway? They'll ruin his feet. And that would sure be a shame. <laughs> Why, it's our duty to look after our poor, uneducated red brother. Same thing on this one, buddy. Got it? Yeah. Let's pick up Harry. You know, for an engine, he sure does talk good English, don't he? Yeah, he not only talks good. You've been watching one of those horses the last couple of days? He talks pretty good to them, too, don't he? Darn right. Yep. You know, that's one thing about a horse. It don't make any difference what color the man's skin that gets on him. He knows it's a man when he's on there. Hey. Pull by the saloon. Get up. Get up. Who did this to you? Doesn't matter. Look, nobody can get away with this. Not in this town. Now, who did it? Do me a favor, Joe, and get me out of here. Joey needs help. Let's get him to the wagon. Come on. Bring him on. Come on. Get up. Get up. Nothing but admiration for a man who bucks big odds and fights his own battles. You know, sometimes it just isn't practical. And that's why we have a government of law and officers to enforce that law. Well, Mr. Cartwright, those laws don't apply to me. Mm -hmm. Have you tried them? Sure, I've tried them. Now, suppose I named the men that beat me up and brought charges against them. But what court ever took the word of a half Comanche for anything? Look, Harry, without your telling us, we know that the man Pa fired was in on this somehow. Now, why not just admit it? Please, Joe, let's forget the whole thing. And after tomorrow, you can forget about Harry Starr, because I'm moving on. You can't keep running all the time. Oh, yes, you can. That's how I've stayed alive up till now. You see, I know that if I stay around here and work the roundup, the same thing will happen again. Trouble. Not while we're around. Well, I thank you, but I guess the only hope for me is to find a job someplace where the only thing I can offend are rattlesnakes and jackrabbits. Boys, would you say that Harry has just given us an excellent description of the line shack up in Perdido Canyon? Yeah, it sure does, Pa, like he'd been there. You know, we've got a lot of work that has to be done up there in Perdido Canyon. It's lonely work, but it's yours if you want it. I sure don't know why you folks bother with me, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I reckon it's about time somebody did, huh, Harry? A little joke and ride out with you as, well, as soon as you feel up to it. If you're willing to take a chance with me. 
I thank you, sir. I hope you're never sorry. Joe, why don't you take Harry up to his room? I think he needs a little rest. Right, Pa. Come on, Harry. You're up early this morning. Yeah, me and Sunrises are old friends. You feeling better? Just as good as new. When you're ready to go out to that line shack. Anytime you say. I'm ready right now, as soon as I put this horse in the stall. <laughs> you mind if I ask a favor? Go ahead. You think your pa would mind if I climbed aboard this horse and just to get the feel of him? Go ahead, pa wouldn't mind. Okay. care of that? How about another cup of coffee, Joe, before you leave? Don't mind if I do. You make good coffee. Yeah. You're good at coffee making and horse breaking. I guess it's because I've had plenty of practice at both. You like horses, don't you, Harry? Yeah, that's the Indian part of me, Joe. It's like they say. An Indian takes better care of its horse than he does his squaw. <laughs> hey, tell me, how long did you, did you live with your people? Well, Joe, the Comanches are no more my people than a white man is. See, my mother was a captive white woman and my father was a big brave until he met up with white man's firewater. And soon after my mother died, they just kicked him right out of the tribe. Well, what happened to you then? Oh, they had as little use for me as they did my mother and father. You see, Joe, when you're only half of something, you're really half of nothing. So I left. Well, you had it pretty rough. Well, it taught me a lot. I picked up a few things, like making coffee, breaking horses, and living alone. Yeah, living alone. There's one thing about living alone, you don't have to put up with the likes of Lee Burton. By golly, that's right. That's one good thing. I don't have to put up with the Lee Burtons. Thanks for the coffee. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with some supplies for you. All right, Joe. Joe, thanks again for the help. Right. See you in a couple of weeks. Took long enough getting here. Yeah, well, I came a long way. The car ride sent me to a line shack in Perdido Canyon. I told them I wanted lonely work. They sure came through. How do you do it, Harry? You take a man as smart as Ben Cartwright, you make him give you exactly what you want. Old Harry must hypnotize him. Yeah, well, I couldn't do it alone. Is this the stuff I'll need? 
You're in business. Yes. Very nice. Now, what would a nice, clean, working cowhand from the Ponderosa want with a tool like this? You can count on me being around to answer that question when it's asked. Where do we hit first? The Ponderosa. You can't beat biting the hand that feeds you for a dirty half-breed trick. Yeah, that's always been a winner. I knew you'd like it. You know, Lee, you're a great Indian baiter. Why not? That's my job, ain't it? You just keep doing your job, Lee. How do you figure, Harry? I don't try. I wonder if he's still with us. <laughs> Why not? No place else for him to go. Let's get out of here. Yeah, much obliged, Sheriff. Don't you mention it. Howdy, Ben. Roy. I heard you had some horses stolen last night. Would you hear that? Well, maybe I only expected to hear it. I was talking to Chet and Billy here, and they were telling me that they lost some horses last night. Like it's not, I'm gunshot. No, you aren't. They got six of ours, including the Palomino Stallion of Paz. They took four of Chet's best stock horses, seven of mine, including the mare in full. It beats me. We ain't had a horse stealing around Virginia City in so long that, well, I'd about figured it was gone out of style. Well, whoever stole these horses had plenty of style. We checked Hazleton Creek, both sides of the bank for miles. Not a sign of them coming out. Yeah, there's no chance of trailing them from my place. I figured they must have took them out over the trail we used to bring in the remuda. There's no question about it. This heroine's a real smart umber when it comes to covering up the tracks. Well, boys, you keep in touch and we'll do the best that we can. Horse thieves make mistakes too, you know. Even smart ones. Right. Well, thanks, Sheriff. All right, All right. take care. We'll see you, Sheriff. I'd like to make a little bet. This horse thief. I say he's that half-breed that's working for you. Well, I'll take that bet, mister. Well, now, I ain't got no rich papa. Well, you just make it for how much you want to make it for. Fifty dollars. You're covered. Gordon, I'm pretty sure of this bet. Have you seen Harry Starr stealing any horses? No, I'm just putting my money on what I know about breeds. Now, are you going to tell me that you had this engine where you can watch him every minute? He was about as far away from where those horses were stolen as a man could be. In Perdido Canyon, that's where he's working. Anybody with him? <laughs> that little half-engine must be getting lonely out there all by himself. Sheriff, if you want to catch yourself a horse thief, I got a hunch this Perdido Canyon is a good place to start. Seems like kind of a long way to me to check on a man's hunch. Should have realized you wouldn't want to embarrass the Cartwrights. Maybe after he gets away with a few more horses, you'll see it different. I agree with you, Roy. There's no evidence that Harry Starr stole any horses. And it's a long way to go to checking a hunch. But if Mr. Burton here is going to be shooting his mouth off around town, maybe little Joe and I could save a little time by checking on it on the way home. If you do that, Ben, I'll be obliged to you. And let me know after you talk to this Harry Starr. I'm going with you. I'll meet you here with my horse. I sure want to see your faces when you find out that this half Comanche has paid you back for trusting him. Hey, that burden talks, I can't figure out if he thinks every horse thief's a half breed or every half breed's a horse thief. A uh, man like Burton uses it either way. Whichever way suits his purpose, and that's it going. You take it easy, Roy. I'll do that.
he ain't here. So funny about it. We didn't send him up here to lie around the shack all day. We sent him up here to work. That's probably what he's doing. He's probably up in the canyon working that watering basin. That's one of the jobs he was supposed to do. We'll run out and look for him there. I think I'll stick here. Poke around the shack a little bit. I'll stay up here too, Pop. Yeah, well, I'll go up the canyon. You say he's been living in this shack? Brought him up here four days ago. Looks pretty neat, don't it? Almost like he hadn't been here at all. You remember pretty well what he brought with him? Mm-hmm. Well, would you say there's uh, four days grub missing? A lot of game in this canyon, Burton. Is that right? What do you expect to find? I don't know. Maybe I'm looking around just for the fun of it. Well, look here. Looks like Brandon irons, don't they? Never saw one like this before. Maybe I'm not as smart as you are, Cartwright, but uh, couldn't this iron be used to change the Ponderosa brand? When I find a brand that's been changed, I'll remember your idea. Let's try something, Cartwright. See if there's anything to that crazy idea of mine. That's the Ponderosa brand, right? Sure no trick to change a brand, is it? No sign of Harry, huh? No. Just found that corral hidden up in the drawer. But half a dozen horses there. Some of them are, some of the neighbors. Do you mind paying me that bet now, Cartwright? Not until we find Harry. Tell you what I'll do. I'll let the bet ride. One hundred dollars says that Comanche friend of yours is off right now fixing to steal some more horses. I'm going into town and tell the sheriff. He'll want to get up a little search party. And that's one party I don't want to miss. I just can't be. When I rode out here with Harry the other day, we... A little time to talk. He told me about how it was when he was a kid. He had no friends. Nobody wanted him. He said we were the only friends he had. I want to believe in him, Pop. I'd like to, too. But... Well, let's get the rest of the horses.
stream must be fed by snow back in the mountains. Whoa. Never mind that stream. Did they raise the reward money yet? I doubled it. Well, it's about time. I was beginning to wonder if I was appreciated. Appreciated? It's all you hear anybody talk. Harry Starr, Harry Starr. Where'd he hit last night? Makes our job simple. Lee's right. Nobody questions anything except where's that breed getting off to with all them horses. They're spooked. Real spooked. Well, it took ten days to get him spooked enough to raise a reward. But you know, this is rich country. They'll double it again in a couple more days. We're pressing our luck now, Harry. I say we cash out. We move to Wyoming or the Dakotas. Let them folks take a look at Harry the half-breed horse thief. No, no, I want to see that reward money doubled again. You're talking like you're hungry, Harry. Listen, these ranchers got up a kitty. They'll pay $20 a head for every stolen horse that's found. Add that to the reward money, we can be in the clear with $5,500. Why take any chances? Lee, you sound like a man whose skin might be a little yellow. Well, even so, Harry. I never thought I'd hear you judge a man by the color of his skin. We pull out when I say, not before. I see a different Harry. Stokey? I do too. Clawson? Me too. Warren? So you had it all worked out before you even got here, huh? No matter what we worked it out, Harry, we worked it out. You gotta live with it. Watching for a chance to talk to you. It's funny, I've been wanting to talk to you too, Harry. Do I talk to my friend or do I talk to his gun? Oh, I'm not a horse thief, Joe. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm not. You tell me how the horses got in Perdido Canyon. You answer that and I'll meet you halfway. I can't, Joe. All I know is what happened to me. All right, what happened to you? Well... It was about the third night in the line shack, and I thought I heard somebody outside. I remember opening the door and taking about two steps, and that's all. The next thing I knew, it was daylight, and I was coming to in a pine thicket about ten miles from the shack. Why didn't you go back to the shack? I did. We were there. You weren't. I saw Lee Burton first, so I crawled back into the brush, and I heard you all name me a horse thief. No, not all of us. But if you weren't, why didn't you come out then and tell us? If your father was a renegade Comanche, you wouldn't ask that question. A lot of horses are stolen, Harry. People in a real angry mood, you didn't help yourself by running away. All these people have to do is think a half-breed guilty, and he's liable to hang. Oh, you'll get a fair trial here. A trial? You asking me to turn myself into the sheriff? You have to. Oh, no. No. At least I had this chance to talk to you, Joe. I'm sorry, I can't let you go, Harry. Well, then you're going to have to shoot me down, because I'm not buying the lynching party, even from you. Look, all I'm trying to tell you is you'll get more justice in Virginia City than you will by, by running into some bounty hunter out on the road. I'd never get as far as that sheriff if I rode into town. We'll be with you. You'll get there. Well, now, if you and your father rode in with me, then maybe I would have a chance. Pause in the house, I'll tell him. Well, just a minute now. 
If I go your way, I'll meet you at the Furnace Creek Crossing tomorrow. At noon, straight up. We'll be there. Don't let me down, Harry. I'm believing in you. I won't, you. Mistake. I'll give him a little more time. It's an important decision for him to make. I never should have left that decision up to him. Well, you did what you could. It's up to Harry now. That's far enough, Cartwright. Stop right there. Right out. Now. Right in there. Well, I don't have to tell you that I uh, earned this reward. You earned yourself a rope around your neck. For hanging a horse thief? Poster says dead or alive, done it. Well, I've been trying to tell you. All he ever wanted to do was kill a half breed. Now, I say the object was murder, and that's what it was. Now, Ben, I don't believe you got any real proof of that. And besides, hanging a horse thief simply ain't murder in this territory. Look, Roy, there were four of them. They could have brought them in for trial if they wanted to. Card right, that half Comanche got away with over 75 horses, some of them yours. Hold on there. Nobody saw him steal one horse, and nobody saw him in possession of any horses. What about the animals we found out at your lion shack? What about them branding irons? This poster said this $4,000 come to me, and that's all I care about. Mister, I've got to see the remains before I authorize the payment of any reward money. Sheriff, you mean to tell me you don't take the Cartwright's word for what they saw? You think they'd come in here just to make me an easy $4,000? Mister, it don't make no difference what I think. I have got to see the body. Now, I believe it's a little late to be heading out that way this evening. We'd no more than get to the crossroads and it'd be dark. But we'll go out the first thing in the morning and examine that grave. Well, I'm ready whenever you are, Sheriff. Me and the boys will be glad to take you there. Ben, don't look at me like that. I'm doing my job the best way I know how. Suppose some regular rancher had a caught star and strung him up. Would you be telling me to lock him up for murder? If he'd gone out of his way to kill him, yes. Ben, I agree with you that every man is entitled to his day in court and all that, but let's look at this thing practically. An expensive court trial wouldn't make no difference to Star. He'd have been hung anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right, Roy. Just forget about him. He's only a half-breed. Joe, forget it, Joseph. I'm sorry, Ben, but it's in the books. Hanging a horse thief just ain't murder in this territory. Sure it ain't. expect to see you Cartwrights out here this morning. Don't you ever give up? 
He came out to claim Harry Starr's body. I guess we're a little late. What was the guy telling already? That's all we could find, Roy. And don't you even have enough respect for a dead man to give him a proper grave? Did you ever see a white man after Comanche's got done with him? Don't talk to me about respect for dead Indians. Sheriff, you still have to see the body before you pay the money? You get your money, all right. But I'm going to see to it personally that you spend it any other place in Virginia City. Might as well go home. So you and Hoss go ahead. I'll be along after a while. What do you have in mind? Uh, nothing. I just want to take some time and think this thing through. You uh, like to talk it through? I can't help thinking I put that rope around Harry's neck myself. Look, Joe, if Harry had done like you told him, if he'd have gone in and turned himself into the sheriff, he'd still be alive, wouldn't he? That's right. Joe, we're men. We're not mystics or foretellers of the future. We can't be responsible for the consequences of any of our actions. We don't know what they're going to be, even in the best of faith. I think that's the word, Bob. What? Faith. If I really had faith in believing what Harry told me, then it's about time I did something about it. Like what? If there were 70 horses stolen. If I'm going to be honest in believing that Harry didn't take them, then I want to find out who did and where they are. Son, don't use this as an excuse to go after Burton for what he did to Harry. I won't. I promise you I won't. I'll be careful. <laughs> hey, bartender, bring some whiskey over here. Come on, let's go. No, no, no we're just getting started. Ah, oh, we gotta go. Come on. Oh, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <That's a diamond. laughs> what are you looking at? Go on, get out of here. <laughs> You'll be back to see me. Sure, I ain't just keep your light burning. I can't afford to keep it burning too long. Well, let me see here. That ought to be enough to keep it burning till I get back. What do you do that for? Shut up. Stokey, get back down the trail. See if anybody's following us. We'll wait for you up ahead.
Ah, I didn't see a thing. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. What are you getting so spooky about? real as this gun. Yeah, I, saw, I saw you hanging from a tree. Sure, I still have the rope burns under my arms, trying to keep the weight out of the noose. So that's why the grave was empty, huh? Yeah, that's why, Joe. Now get your hands behind your head. Move on down there. I said move. And keep digging. I want Harry Starr's grave real deep this time. Go on, throw it over with the others. Throw it over with the others. so wrong about him. I wanted to be his friend. I'm afraid that isn't what Harry had in mind. Oh, I hope I'm never that stupid again. Oh, you weren't stupid. No, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. You have to admit Pi sure made it easy for him. I'll try asking yourself why you did. Why, well, I thought I was the only friend he had in the world. But he was alone, taking a beating. He couldn't help himself. 
In other words, he was an underdog. You had no way of knowing that he was anything else. Joe. Never feel guilty about having warm human feelings toward anyone. It will be of any comfort to you. I felt exactly the same way about Harry as you did. For the same reasons. That doesn't make the reasons wrong. Just Harry. <laughs>